Hello friends, so today we will be discussing about how to improve your research publications, especially in high impact journals. We are talking about ESCI, SSCI and Scopus Index journals. Hope that this video will be very fruitful for your future publications. Dear researchers, and so this PowerPoint will provide you useful tips to improve your prospects in publishing in Scopus Index, ESCI and Impact Factor journals. And we will go through a 10 step guide of how to publish in high impact factor journals. I think you will agree that the choice of journals plays an important role for your publications. So it is very important that before you submit any paper, you read the scope and aim and objectives of the journal. In addition, use journal finder, such as provided by Springer, Elsevier, and other recognized journals to find the most suitable journal for your research paper. I have provided one example of a link here. You should also read sample articles to check on the type of articles being submitted in the journal. And it is also important to be clear whether the journal accepts quantitative, qualitative or mixed approach. Because some journals might be focusing only on quantitative uh, papers. In addition, because you want to publish in high quality journals, always check whether these journals are listed in important indexes such as Scopus Index, the list of journals of Web of Science, and also the Doage for open access journals, which are and the links are provided hereby. As a reviewer and also an editorial board member, I'm always interested with the research problem. Many researchers face difficulties in writing the research problem effectively. I hope you will agree with that. In fact, research problems should be factual. There is a free step plan here which can help you in writing a research problem more effectively. Firstly, you should state the expected outcome and desired state of things. Secondly, explain what are the actual problems and gaps. And thirdly, how the present research can help deal with the problems briefly. And the free step plan is explained in the link below from the website of EditH. So now let's talk about one important part of the research paper, which is the literature review section. And the literature review should be structured in a way to provide relevant existing research based on the research objective set. So there should be a proper alignment here. And I think you also know that literature review should be updated. Normally, it should be in the last five years or 10 years, but you may have other references as well. And for you to be more focused in terms of your literature review, you should use the funneling down approach as explained in the diagram. You, as you can see, you should start more broadly and be more specific. And at the end, you may come up with a hypothesis statement. So that is very important in terms of literature review. And the literature should be relevant to your theme, to your topic and your research objectives. In addition, the literature should also explain the research gaps and references to the earlier research approaches used. Uh, many researchers believe that because it is literature review, they can just copy and paste, but that's not the case. Even if it's literature review, it's very important that you rephrase and paraphrase, you know, so that you reduce your similarity rate. And a good literature review is also about including appropriate authoritative sources in the field that you're writing. So do not forget to cite these important uh, research authorities. Good journals should always check whether the research methodology is robust enough before publication. Be it quantitative or qualitative, what is important is that you are able to convince the editor and the reviewers that the research approach is appropriate. Please read research methodology books and articles before writing this section. And if you're doing quantitative research, explain the population, the sample size and the sampling technique in a convincing way. Uh, 
as a good practice make references to the ontological and epistemological perspective means what is your perception of things and how you think the approach that you are using justifies your way of looking at things and as a good practice it's also you know important if you could discuss your your methodology with peers and uh, maybe even on research platforms now do not forget to explain how the method used is reliable using academic references wherever possible so reliability is a key uh, aspect in your research methodology which should not be uh, ignored some editors and reviewers also point to the poor ink quality of english which affects the readability and comprehension of a research paper so it is very important that as a researcher you 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 nurture the english in your in your research paper and some tips here you may use grammarly software and sometimes informal peer reviews before submission now if you're not familiar with academic writing style learn some basic techniques of writing with academic rigor so you can check on youtube or you can also follow some short courses on academic style of writing now if you you think that the research paper is very poor then of course you can also take the help of professional editing services which are normally paid to make your paper more professional always read your document a number of times critically before making any submission and checking you know about the sentence structure the grammar and so on as the quality of english is very very important your research paper may be des rejected if there is high similarity rate so always as a principle check the similarity rate before submitting for a journal now there is different journals have different similarity acceptance level however as a general rule the plagiarism should not exceed 15% but some journals like springer might be up to less than 10% so always check your single source similarity as well which should not be more than 3% or even less in many cases uh, many offers also uh, engage in self plagiarism where they cite their own work but without making references to it or they take their previous work without acknowledgement and so on so these things should be avoided and there are clear guidelines about self plagiarism and to reduce your plagiarism always use proper paraphrasing without changing the meaning of the sentence so uh, some people just look for synonyms of certain words but that doesn't work it is important to rewrite the whole sentence but without changing the meaning of what the author wanted to say uh, there are many videos on youtube on how to reduce plagiarism an appropriate way of referencing so please as a, it's a good principle that because if it's your work is of high similarity it will be des rejected you should also check your formatting styles and here uh, it's quite tricky because every journal has their own formatting styles i mean i mean the font size paragraphing references so before sending your journal paper please check whether you are adhering to the formatting guidelines of the journal uh, one way is to check for existing articles to have a better idea on the formatting some journals use the imrad format for example the, the imrad format is where there is introduction methods results and discussion but as i just said every journal or different journals have different formats so you need to be aware of the formatting issues the referencing style also is very different from journals to journal some uh, journals prefer harvard others apa and even in harvard there are different referencing styles for example sage has their own in referencing uh, for harvard style so so you have to be very very careful about the formatting but many journals as a matter of precaution they provide sample formats so do take that into consideration when uh, you are writing your research paper another important 
aspect of a research paper or the ethical guidelines. So many journals now they adhere to the Committee of Publication Ethics Guidelines to ensure compliance to ethical standards and clearance. So, for example, whether you have permission of you know uh, of, of of the company before putting the name, any clearances, and depending on the topic that you are writing. So so as a matter of principle. Uh, always check whether you have adhered to the COPE, what we call the Committee of Publication Ethics Guideline. And uh, because nowadays uh, journals have, are becoming more stringent on this aspect. So after you have submitted your research paper, you would be waiting for the reviewer's comments. And once you receive them, it's very important that you address them in the most effective manner. Now, most articles would normally receive major reviews, which are important to be addressed. Now, what you have to learn here is you should always be positive about comments, even however, uh, you know, uh, nasty, if we can say, or, uh, you know, uh, strong the comments can be. But we should learn to deal with it effectively and efficiently. Now, if you don't agree with one of the reviewer's comments, what is important is you you make your point and explain in a very diplomatic way why you think that the reviewer may not be right. But then you have to be very careful because the reviewer's acceptance of changes are very important. Uh, you should also provide, as a principle, the paragraphs and sections where you have made the changes. This will help the reviewer to identify that you have made the changes and you have done it in the proper way. Now. To, to, to improve your ability to deal with reviewers comments, I think you should also learn and, and to, to review papers and that can help you understand what reviewers normally want in a good research paper. So peer review should be an important exercise, not only for submission of paper, but for improving your own research papers. Reviewers also attach great importance to the results and discussions in your research paper. So as you're targeting quality journals, learn to present results in a more scientific approach. Discussion should not be just description and should make references to the literature or even sometimes you can add new literature to substantiate your arguments. Uh, you should check your quality of your charts and statistics because the presentation of your data is very important uh, as much as the reliability of the data so to improve your reliability of your data learn your statistics well uh, and present your hypothesis testing in a very scientific approach uh, you may need sometimes the help of a professional of, in statistics to improve your the quality of the research paper also do check whether the assumptions and conditions are met for the use of the statistics so that you don't get any negative reviews. So now we've come to the last step <coughs> of, of the guidelines. And here what I'm suggesting is you should develop a research community of practice. So what I mean by that, I mean, you should have a group of peer reviewers, which I mean, uh, informally can review your paper or it can also give you suggestions in writing your research papers. As research can be tedious and, develop, and developing effective collaborations may be very, very helpful. Now, having a complementary research partner can also help in publishing in high impact journals, especially where, for example, if you, you're, you're, you're not so good, for example, in the methodology, or you don't know how to, to, to come up with effective statistics. So it's good to have peer reviews, you know, uh, that who, who can give you useful advice. And it can also help you to learn and grow with more fruitful discussions. I think the more we discuss our research, the more we come up with more interesting ideas. So these are the 10 steps, I think, I mean, from my uh, little experience uh, as a researcher, as a reviewer, as an editorial board member, which can be helpful in, in getting published in, uh, in good quality journals.